Howdy, I'm Dave Scott with the National Center for Appropriate Technology, and I wanted to visit with you today, especially if you're new to lambing, about lambing problems, in particular, the way the lamb is presented. Here's a picture of our farm, Montana Highland Lamb, just before lambing. This is the lambing lot. All these expectant mothers are laying around and they're waiting to lamb and you're waiting for them to lamb. Signs of lambing behavior are a little bit different than cattle because sheep don't really exhibit a lot of uh, straining and loosening of the, the tail head ligaments that cattle do. So you have to go a little bit more on signs of their behavior to know when they're going to lamb. One of the signs of a ewe that's very close to lambing is that she tries to steal other ewes' newborn lambs. So that can kind of tip you off. Usually it's 12 to 24 hours before they actually lamb by themselves. They're trying to steal another ewe's lambs. Second thing is you can tell a ewe that's sort of getting close to lambing is that she's a lot of times will stand off by herself in a corner. She might have a kind of a faraway look in her eyes. There also will be clear dis discharge from her vulva, and she might be bleeding, saying something is wrong, or bleating to just tell the world that the event is close. A lot of our older youths that have been around us for a long time, when, we ha when they have a problem, they generally will tell us. They'll be baying out there. And so we're always listening to a, to a bat that says, come help. The other thing that we always try to do when we're, whenever we walk through the lot, and that's usually about every half an hour to an hour during lambing season, we are looking for feet emerging on the backside of the U. It kind of has to be a second nature to you. As we were walking through the lot this day, we saw this ewe with two feet emerging. We also noticed that they were back feet. Here's a closer look to those back feet. You can see that a backwards lamb has its, its heels pointed to the sky. And that's kind of a, an indication right away, almost all the time, it's a backwards lamb. It could be a frontwards lamb that's upside down, but almost always when the heels point to the sky, it's a backwards presentation. Frontwards presentations, the heels always point to the ground. So you can tell right away if you have a frontwards or backwards presentation just by looking at the feet as they come out. Other presentations include frontwards, with one leg protruding out frontwards and one leg back, frontwards but upside down, backwards with both legs emerging, backwards with one leg emerging and one leg back, backwards with no legs. In this case, the you may be really having a hard time lambing because the, there's no legs to push against the cervix to dilate her, her cervix and her vagina. Also, backwards and upside down. And in extreme cases, with multiple, multiple lambs inside the ewe, you can have two legs from two different lambs. I've even had five different legs coming out from three different lambs before. That is quite a puzzle to unravel. In any case, you should treat any abnormal presentation as an emergency. And again, a correct presentation or a normal presentation is always frontwards with two feet coming out and the head tucked right between the two legs. So what do we do with an abnormal presentation? We have to push the lamb back into the uterus so you can reorient the thing that's not right. If it's a frontward facing lamb and has one leg back, you push the lamb back into the uterus and then while you're keeping the leg that is sticking out and presented right, reach with your hands, go into the uterus, follow that leg that's bent back and gently bring it forward. 
If you're new to lambing, seek help. Ask a veterinarian or ask a neighbor who's had lambing experience. The other thing you really have to watch out for when you're positioning or reorienting the lamb in the uterus is that you don't mistakenly break the umbilical cord. It's sometimes easy to do, and if it happens, the poor lamb is pretty much a goner. So, we found out, by observation anyway, that we think this is a backwards-facing lamb. First thing we have to do is catch her, catch the ewe. In our lambing barn, we have an alley that leads to a blind alley that we can run the ewe into. The, use, the ewes are used to going this alley because it's accessible to them at all time. When we want to run a U into a blind alley, we have a gate near the end of the alley that we close and she has to go into the blind alley. It's really easy to catch the U's this way. Outside, we have to crook the U. Be gentle. Remember you have a load of two or three lambs inside that mother. The easiest way to crook the U is to position her and into another group of ewes so she feels at ease. Then walk behind her carefully, corner the group into a corner of your corral and crook the ewe. Once you get that accomplished, move the ewe away from the other ewes so she's a little bit at peace without everybody running around her. It's too bad that I didn't have enough presence of mind to take a video pulling this backward lamp. But it is an emergency, and I was really in a hurry to get that lamb out of there. So instead, what I did was take a few still pictures of the whole process. This picture here shows two legs coming out, and right where they come out of the vulva there, you can see the back hawk. This is one of the landmarks to a back leg. You can feel this hawk or landmark for a black back leg inside the uterus of the ewe when you're just feeling around to try and tell if it's a front leg or back leg. So, we've got to get that lamb out and get it out fast. We put on a sleeve on our left arm. We've got the, the ewe crooked and somebody else is holding her. If she tries to lie down we always get her to lie down on her left side. This is because when she lies down, the rumen will cushion the lambs inside of her. So we pull that, those two back legs out firmly, steadily, and as quickly as we can. This is because when the lamb gets halfway out, the umbilical cord will break and the lamb will be caused to start breathing immediately. And it's inside the uterus at this point. So we want to get that lamb out fast before it takes a breath or two even so it doesn't swallow any of the uterine fluids. If you are inside feeling around that you and you don't have two legs coming out so you don't know if it's a backwards or frontwards la uh, lamb, make sure that you go easy in there the uterus is a very tough organ, but it can be torn. So you don't want to get really rough in finding if it's a back leg or a front leg. As we said, the best way to tell if it's a back leg or a front leg is by feeling for the hawk. You can also feel for a tail. If you find a tail, then you know for sure it's a backwards presentation. In this case, we got the lamb out alive and we gave it to its mom. Now, we did have a presence of mind to take a video of what happened next. Yeah, I'm just going to check and see if we have another lamb in here. We've had one out already, and we do have another lamb. And it's coming frontwards. The only problem is there's one leg that's back. So I'm going to push the whole lamb back towards the mother's mouth. And she's pushing, so it's hard. I'm going to fish for the leg that's back, bent back, and I'm going to pull it forward so both legs are coming out at once. Got one leg, then 
the other leg and the head all coming out now right presented correctly so two legs and a head so I'm just gonna pull and I'm gonna bring this head in position into the birth canal now and she's gonna push hopefully and we're gonna get this lamb out here's front legs first next comes the head as we pull it out we're gonna take the sack off the head so it breathes and there we go okay, we're gonna give this lamb to the mom off. And we're going to check for another one in case there's triplets. I'm going right down deep into the, into the uh, uterus. body of the uterus now. And there's no other lamps there, so we're done. She's licking it up. Here is your reward, two happy lambs and one contented mother. If you have any questions during lambing season, please call me. I will be glad to help. My number at NCAT is 406-533-6642, or you can email me at daves at NCAT.org. Pictures also are really nice to help discuss what went wrong or what went right. Thanks again for listening and happy lambing!